Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're having a look around this AMG GTR Pro. First time I get up close and personal with one, we're gonna do a full exterior walk around, full interior walk around, check out, and then we're gonna go for a POV drive. So I'm gonna put you on my cap right now, and you're gonna see everything from my point of view. Here it is then, AMG GTR Pro. So this is the hardcore version of the GTR, but just not quite as hardcore as the Black Series, which then followed. When this came out, obviously we thought this would be the ultimate version of the AMG GT platform, of which there have been many versions, many variants. So AMG GT, GTS, GTC, GTR, GTR Pro, and then Black Series. Black Series being the ultimate, you know, uber limited. This actually, we don't know how many there were, but very few because they won't produce for a very long amount of time. It was a very product, uh, short production run on these. Um, but anyways, I think they look fantastic and I've always been intrigued by this because is it the perfect balance between the super hardcore uh, GT Black Series, uh, which you don't want to put many miles on because they are, you know, very, very valuable, etc., etc. This is still a very expensive car, 223,000 euros. So I don't know, 200,000 pounds there or thereabouts when it came out. They're holding okay-ish. They have dropped a bit in value, um, but uh, they're holding okay. Uh, now, what's new on the AMG GTR Pro? Well, a lot of carbon and a lot of track-focused goodies. Obviously, this being a much more track-focused car, um, a lot of what's going on is actually mechanical under the hood. Um, so completely revised suspension. It's a lot more adjustable than it was before. You now have 583 horsepower. You have 700 newton meters of torque. That's about 100 less than you have in the uh, Black Series. Now, you get some new things like these canards here, carbon fiber canards. Um, new front splitter, which also can be adjusted to, so that it pokes out a little bit more, like in the Black Series, but in the Black Series it's manual and here it's actually uh, more automated. You have the new facelifted front lights, the new front grille with that massive Mercedes logo. One of the easiest ways to tell that it's the Pro is with this stripe, specific to the Pro. And then also these vents, which are here to get the turbulent air out from uh, the wheel arches uh, and just get the whole airflow working better all together. Now, one thing I, th I found quite cheeky is on the list of new things that's on the Pro compared to the GTR, black brake calipers, not bigger, not any more special in any way, just now that you are able to have them in black paint. Fantastic, for the extra 40,000 pounds, 50,000 euros. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, obviously carbon ceramic as standard as they were on the AMG GTR. Same rims as the AMG GTR, just you can have them in a, in a satin gray color now. Same thing, it's exactly the same, just a new paint color basically. Uh, little carbon fiber details around here. V8 by turbo um, signage, you have the carbon fiber uh, all around the car basically, even on the roof right here, full carbon fiber roof. Um, uh, splitter down the side. Now at the rear is when you can see actually a lot of uh, these new goodies. So you obviously have this huge wing, uh, carbon fiber rear wing, which looks pretty cool. And then these almost 918 Visac like um, little winglets that come out here. Uh, again, part of the Pro package. Huge diffuser where you see the main central exhaust, but then also as with the AMG GTR, you have these hidden exhausts right here, uh, which have, you can tell, because there's this extra little heat protection uh, to protect the carbon fiber on the diffuser. Um, and yeah, a couple little outlets here for airflow as well. But apart from that, it's fairly subtle on the exterior. You need to know really what you're looking at to be able to tell the difference between the GTR Pro and the uh, standard GTR. Um, obviously the Black Series is then a whole different beast, 720 horsepower on that. Now the interior is actually very similar to the Black Series. So you hop in, the main new thing that you notice straight away are these bucket seats, uh, really nice bucket seats. And then around back, you can probably just about see it there, is the roll cage. Those are the main visual biggest differences that you have. Also when it came out, it had this new interior which was fully digital. So if I switch it on, everything will light up. There you go. Sounds really cool. So yeah, fully digital dash, that was new. Uh, it's still got actually the old command system 
which when this car came out, there was already a newer system on like an A-Class and things like that. So this, for example, is not touch screen. So yeah, you can't do anything with your fingertips here. You have to control everything through that on here, which yeah, that feels a little bit outdated. Um, you're not buying a car for its infotainment system, this car at least. Um, but you know, it, do, it does feel like they could have maybe done a bit more effort on that. There's a few things that feel slightly plasticky, like all these buttons here, um, or these empty buttons up here also. Uh, yeah, but honestly, overall, really nice interior. I'm actually gonna put a little light on for you guys. Let's close this up. So you get Burmeister sound system. So it still feels very luxurious in here. For a track focus car, I mean, you're aware that it's a track focus car because you have these carbon buckets, you have that roll cage and things like that. But you know, you still got Alcantara headlining, you still got all your aircon, your Burmeister sound system. It doesn't feel as hardcore as a lot of other very track focused cars. Um, very nice finishes with the matte carbon fiber. It all still feels very nice here. So Mercedes went fully digital with the dash, but also with the buttons down here, which you can configure to have different things. They do actually have action to them, which is nice. It feels like you're pressing a button and the start stop button is still a physical button. It's not like Ferrari where that's now, you know, on the steering wheel and fully digitalized and, and really not very nice. Uh, here it's actually something real, which is so nice to see that pressing things actually gives satisfaction that manufacturers understand that is, is really nice. So you have your volume, your auto start stop, your front lift here and your exhaust. Here you have your drive selector. So you can go from comfort, sport, sport plus race and then all the way back down let's leave it in comfort for now or individual also which is where you'll set it up how you want it to be uh, drive or manual so that basically just means whether it's auto gearbox or through the paddles right here um, and then this is your traction control off interesting button because you can switch the traction off and then press and hold and switch it all the way off right and then you have this button. So see those lights, how they all kind of light up around that button? I don't know if you can see that. If I put it all the way, you'll be able to see it. This basically indicates your level of traction control. So how much, how off do you want it to be? How brave are you feeling, sir? That is controls through here. It was first launched on the GTR. It's also on the GT Black Series and obviously now on the Pro as well. However, we're on Cup 2 tires in very kind of chilly conditions so we're going to leave that fully on now you then get a lot of the same things kind of repeated right here so see that start stop button there boom you can also action it here that exhaust button there you can also action it here personally i think i honestly would rather have less stuff on the steering wheel have a more simple looking steering wheel and just control things here. It's absolutely fine. It's super easy to do it through here. I understand the concept of you don't want to take your eyes off the road too much, but honestly, I mean, most of the time that you'll be doing this stuff, like start stop is when you get in the car, exhaust, when you know where the buttons in is, you're not really going to be taking your eyes off too much. And here to choose your drive select, right? Um, control. I mean, literally it's like a hands width between one and the other. I don't see why you needed both of them and I think it would have just been better to um, keep the steering wheel as simple as possible. You do then get a few things like this you can recognize obviously from other Mercedes. Um, the like indicator stalk and stuff is like same as other Mercedes in, in this kind of plastic. So there's a few things like that, little details, but honestly you're getting this car for how it drives. You're not really getting it for, um, you know, things like that. You'll, you'll let slip. It's like the infotainment system. Although I, I imagine if you're doing a lot of miles in this car, which you very easily could do, that would get quite annoying after a while. Anyway, let's uh, spin it around and go for a drive. Okay, here we go. We have a videographer in the side here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so we're starting off in comfort mode. Uh, drive like everything just normal and then we'll just work up little by little I hope you can actually kind of see because there's this like Sun band logo thing right here which is probably blocking a little bit of the view off we go okay so normal drive mode 
well, first of all, you have that super particular AMG, SLS AMG GT kind of style of really long front hood and you have that feeling of being sat on the rear wheels basically. And it's pretty particular because when you're maneuvering it around, you're kind of swinging the front round and you just need to be aware of it. You need to readapt kind of how you're driving. And this interior is slightly claustrophobic almost. You're sat really low down. The windows are quite high up. The front windscreen is quite perpendicular. And uh, yeah, you just feel like you're in this cocoon of power, basically. The new digital dash is really nice uh, when you're driving. And yeah, I mean, it feels like it would almost be more intimidating than it actually is once you get driving. Um, it's actually not that bad. Uh, you kind of get used to it fairly fast. However, the suspension, and I don't know if it's because they fiddled around with this one a little bit, or as I said, it's a lot more adjustable, the suspension now, if they've adjusted it to be more hardcore because the owner of this plans to take it to the Nürburgring a bunch, but the suspension is pretty hardcore. Even in comfort mode like this, you're very aware that you're in a track-focused car. Um, everything else, it's kind of like a con it's confusing to your senses because everything else that you're touching feels quite nice and luxurious, like this Alcantara steering wheel. As I mentioned, you have the Harman Kardon, you have all those luxury things. But then, I mean, you maybe saw it then, when you go over a bump, uh, you all of a sudden, it just gets super kind of hardcore and stiff. So we're gonna brake and turn in here. Nice ceramic brakes. I'm getting my directions. <laughs> this is how I know where I'm going or else I don't know. A bunch of nice cars here at LHDK, which is a car covering place here um, in Switzerland. So if ever you're around here, then I highly recommend coming to see them. We're going to let them by. So this is going to be a test of the suspension here going over train tracks. Is he going to? No, he's coming. Start, stop in a 580 horsepower AMG GTR Black Series. Oh no, it's not a GTR Black Series, it's a GTR Pro. Hopefully no trains coming. Oi, 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 yeah. There you go, there's that tough suspension. So here, all of a sudden, when you're on these small roads, you go, okay, yes, it is actually quite a wide car, isn't it? Um, now, let's go out of comfort and into, let's just go straight into Sport Plus. Let's not faff around, shall we? and then manual. So you see what I mean about these buttons? I don't end up using these ones on the steering wheel for some reason. I just find it more natural to go here. However, reaching over to the gear lever is a bit of a nightmare with the shape of these seats. It's kind of hard to reach around to it, um, but hey ho. We're not gonna be touching any of this today because we're on cup two tires and it is 12 degrees. So yeah, we're not gonna be doing any of that. Now, we're in manual, which means we are in charge of the music. We are at the head of the orchestra of this beautiful V8. Now it's a completely different sound to the one, whoa, okay, yep, it is very powerful. <laughs> completely different sound to the one that you get on the GT Black series, where they've completely um, yeah, redesigned that engine. And that sounds a lot more Ferrari-esque now, whereas here you still have that brunty AMG sound. Um, which I love. I mean, this car has its own character and it's so cool to see how different it is from other, you know, from the Lambos, from the Ferraris, even from the Porsches and stuff. It's just got its complete own kind of way of doing things. And I actually really like that. See how you kind of just swing the front in and then the back will follow. Whoa. <laughs> it is so fast and it, doesn't feel, I mean, it's actually almost nicer in sport plus mode to do this kind of driving because in comfort mode, you're kind of very aware of the road noise. They've obviously taken some sound deadening out. So you kind of hear everything that's going on a lot more, but you don't get that V8 sound as much. Now you kind of don't hear the not so good stuff because it's covered by the good stuff. So I would definitely find myself driving around like this all the time. I imagine fuel consumption is a topic that nobody who is buying one of these really cares about, but it's probably pretty horrific when you're driving it like this. The gearbox is really nice. Feels really good, really responsive, and you get nice 
satisfying pops and bangs when you downshift. Let's give it, give it a little bit here. Yep, very, very fast. <laughs> and I'm only going really light there because you don't want it to completely light up the rear tires. When we first started driving, it was like driving on ice. But now the tires have a little bit of temperature in them. The engine has a bit of temperature. So we're able to go a little faster, but this isn't my car. Uh, and we're on some pretty, uh, yeah, hardcore tires. So I don't want to take any unnecessary risks. It is a very cool vibe this car it feels like a muscle car that has been to boarding school and is a little bit ashamed of its past is the best way to describe it so it's like a, a grunty old muscle car but it's trying to be all fancy with a nice interior and i'm a mercedes and i was built in germany and all this kind of stuff but when you put your foot down and when it comes to it we go this way after okay when it comes to it all of a sudden it kind of shows you its true colors of it being what feels like a muscle car. So the way the power delivery arrives, it's, it's obviously quite torquey, 700 Newton meters. So it will pick up the power pretty quickly, but then it kind of feels slightly lazy at first. And then all of a sudden when it wakes up, you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. The power is, the power all of a sudden kind of makes you very aware of it. Um, and it, the steering is nicely weighted, you know, it's not kind of really, you know, weak feeling steering like you get on a lot of modern cars. This, especially in Sport Plus, feels very nicely weighted and it's very communicative of what's going on. The front end feels so far away from you, but you feel like you're able to communicate with it really nicely. Same thing with the brake pedal, often with these ceramics, they take a long time to warm up and they're not very communicative. This, you feel exactly what's going on under your under your foot overall it's just a really really pleasant experience um, awesome engine like brute force engine great gearbox great feeling now does it feel like it's worth more well 40,000 pounds 50,000 euros more than an AMG GTR a standard GTR impossible to tell you on roads like this you'd need to drive on track to really be able to to know that but um, it definitely feels like it's got yeah, plenty of character and obviously there's the exterior aesthetic stuff, but to really see on the mechanical side um, and yeah, the dynamic side, the differences, you would need to drive this thing on track, which unfortunately we're not able to do. Nevertheless, no, but... nevertheless, it has been a really fun drive getting to know this. Look at that. You can feel, oh, but it's so cold and slippery that even there you can just feel that it's kind of starting to fight you a little bit um, but yeah it's been a an awesome time getting to know this car hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you for the next one very soon cheers guys bye bye